this evening to watch the first ever debate between the Edinburgh University Politics Society and the Edinburgh University Debating Union. Uh, my name is Dante Mansari. I'll be moderating this evening. Um, uh, on the affirmative side, the uh, proposal, we have uh, MSP Mike Rumbles, Oliver Edwards, and James Curtis. On the uh, opposition side, we have um, Barney Ross, please correct me if I'm pronouncing this wrong at all, uh, Dave Massaro and Sandy Henry, <coughs> is that correct? Um, from this side, Barney and Dave have won the Aberdeen Open two weeks ago, so kudos there. <laughs> um, and I was asked to say that Sandy uh, thought he broke at the Euro. <laughs> <laughs> On the, uh, on the politics side, we have uh, MSP Mike Rumbles, who's been a Lib Dem MSP since 1994. He previously stood for party leadership in Holyrood and is now a shadow environment minister. Furthermore, we have uh, Oliver Edwards, president of the Politics Society, and uh, James Griffin, our secretary, uh, treasurer. That's what Now, um, the motion this evening is this house would scrap Trident. Politics Society um, proposal and debate opposition. Uh, before we get started, we just want to say a quick thanks to Blackwell's um, for all of their help, particularly Vanessa Garden. Thank you very much for um, organizing this event and giving us the space. And just a couple of quick announcements. There are two fire exits in the back. Just be aware of those. Um, and also, there's 10% uh, off for anyone here tonight on books here at Blackwell's. So, very generous on Blackwell's part. Um, without further ado, I think we will get started with the proposition. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Glad to be here tonight. Let's go straight into it, shall we? Um, the Liberal Democrats have a long-standing commitment to work for the elimination of nuclear weapons on a multilateral basis, <coughs> while retaining the UK's current minimum deterrent until progress has been made to that end. No decision to replace Britain's Trident system needed to have been taken until 2014, yet the House of Commons voted last year to do just that. The UK government plans to spend £25 billion on a new generation of submarines for Trident missiles. Submarine numbers will be cut from four to three, as will, of course, the number of nuclear warheads by some 20%. This decision to rush ahead with the replacement of the Trident system was, in my view, more about ensuring the legacy of Tony Blair rather than securing Britain's long-term interests. Britain is a founder signatory to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. This treaty isn't just about ensuring more nations do not acquire nuclear weapons. <coughs> As part of the deal for stopping nations acquiring these weapons, the nuclear states who are in the nuclear club are supposed to make real efforts to bring about nuclear disarmament. So while world opinion is quite rightly quick to focus on the states who seek to acquire nuclear weapons, such as North Korea and Iran, where is world opinion when it comes to this other aspect of the Non-Proliferation Treaty? Now, three years ago, we had the failure of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty Review Conference and the failure of the UN's World Summit to make any meaningful progress on nuclear disarmament. It simply isn't happening. And when our own country moves to extend and improve its own weapons of mass destruction, then our government really is paying nothing more and lip service to its declared commitment to work towards the elimination of these weapons. Now there are many arguments that can be deployed to argue why the United Kingdom should or should not renew its Trident nuclear weapon systems. I'm sure you'll see here a lot of them tonight. There are good moral, economic, <coughs> political, practical and indeed military reasons as to why replacing the Trident system is the wrong thing to do. Taking the moral issue first, I mean, I couldn't agree more with the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Scotland, which said in a statement <coughs> that 
the church teaches that it's immoral to use weapons of mass destruction in an act of war. Any act of war aimed indiscriminately at the destruction of entire cities or extensive areas along with their population is a crime against God and man himself. It merits unequivocal and unhesitating condemnation. Now one can argue that international law also prohibits such acts, but I'm not going to go down the legal route here. A war that is engaged in such a way could never be described as a just war. Now I believe in the concept of a just war. And I wouldn't have spent 15 years of my adult life in the army. My war role was as a nuclear, biological and chemical warfare warning and reporting officer in the British Army of the Rhine. I trained to help fight the conventional war on the North German plane, in which we always assumed a nuclear attack by the Soviet Union. Now, thank God, the nuclear threat from the old Soviet Union has gone. The Trident and other strategic nuclear weapons remain. And the economic and military arguments blend with the practical arguments against renewing the Trident system. Why are we about to spend 25,000 million pounds on a system which everyone acknowledges, I'm sure even the opposition will acknowledge, we wouldn't be mad ever to have to use. We even have an, an acronym for it, MAD, Mutually Assured Destruction. Can any sane person believe that there are any circumstances at all in which a UK Prime Minister would order the release of our strategic nuclear deterrent to rain down mass destruction on innocent lives on a global scale? No. The theory of mutually assured destruction is indeed mad and belongs in the realm, in my opinion, of cinema's Dr. Strangelove. On the contrary, we, we'd say that it is exactly being prepared to use a nuclear deterrent that is the surest way to stop people attacking you with nuclear bombs in the first place. But the interesting point about that is you have to be believable. And are we really trying to say that our Prime Minister is mad? I'll come to that point in a minute. <laughs> However, as much as I cannot accept that there is any sane argument for even <laughs> contemplating the use of strategic nuclear weapons, I'm neither a member nor supporter of CND. Why not? Because I draw the distinction between strategic nuclear weapons of mass destruction such as Trident, the use of which would be completely indefensible, and other tactical low-yield weapons which are designed for defensive use on battlefields. I did say that I was a military man. Given that no sane person would ever use Trident missile system, why have the majority of our MPs voted to spend such a huge amount of taxpayers' money on renewing it? No, it isn't because they are all insane, as much as I'd like to paint my political opponents as such, and I wouldn't be so rude to my opponents tonight to paint them as insane, it's simply down to politics. It would indeed be unfortunate if the United Kingdom government felt that to be a world player, we needed to be a member of the nuclear club. But I can't think of any other reason certainly not a military reason why the government would even contemplate meeting the huge cost of replacing Trident. Now some people argue, and you might very well hear this argument tonight, that our place in the United Nations, our place in Europe, and indeed our special relationship with the United States of America, all to an extent depend on our membership of this exclusive and very expensive club. Well, I don't subscribe to this view. Our special relationship with the USA is more to do with our common links of history, culture, and language more than anything else. The influence uh, nations exert in the world, with the exception of the USA, 